Hey kids, it's me, Mr. Castiglione. I'm here with my friend Sydney and Katana. And we're here today to show you how to draw some 3D shapes. First, check out this video with my friend Yassine. He's going to introduce to you the 3D shapes. Then, after the video, we'll show you how to draw them. Check it out! Okay, all right. I actually have the shapes from the video right here, boys and girls. And if you look at the actual shape, then you can draw it uh, pretty well if you're looking at it, okay? So this is the pyramid. We're going to uh, draw a diagonal line, and Katana will draw a diagonal line too. And then I'll go to the top and I'll make a diagonal line this way. And I can see three sides. If you move the camera up, I can see one, two, three. Uh, they're not sides, they're, what are these called? Corners, one, two, three corners. And that's what I'll draw. And then at the bottom, I'm noticing it's not quite straight, it's slanted. And I wanna match that slant in my drawing. And I'll have to lower that. Very good, Katana. Okay, this side is slanted up this way. And there we go. All right, if you want to make this look really 3D, you can turn your paper, your pencil like this and shade one side. You can see I went over the bottom a little bit. Oops. And then if you want to shade the other side, it should be a little bit lighter than the first side. And what do we have? We have a pyramid. Pretty cool. And I'll erase the, my little mess ups right there. All right, what do you think, Katana? How's yours? Yours is good too. Now it's time for the cone. All right, same thing. I can see the edges. I can see one edge and two edges. So I will only draw two edges because that's all I can see. One and two. I'm gonna match the shape of the bottom. It looks like a curve, but it's not, I mean, it's only like a little bit of a curve. So here's my artwork, I'll curve it up. And then it looks, I mean, it doesn't really look like anything fancy. It just looks like a triangle. So what I'll do is I'll try and match the shadows and I see sort of a stripe of a shadow down there. And so I'll make a shadow sort of stripe down here again. I turn my pencil this way and I'll shade it in. And if you look very closely, it's not really a stripe. It's actually sort of fades from dark to light very gently. So I'll work my way from dark to light to lighter. From dark to light, from dark to light, all the way up. Or you could do a big section if you'd like. Okay, this takes a lot of control and being careful. Okay, I just shaded this side. Now I'm gonna shade the other side, fading from dark to light. 
dark to light. Dark to light. And, oh, I almost forgot the shadow. There's a, sh see the shadow on the ground? On the table? Well, I can draw the shadow underneath. Again, it's darker close to the, to the shape and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Pretty awesome. And I forgot to do the pyramid. I think the pyramid was more like this. Again, shading from dark to light. Pretty cool. All right, <clears throat> now comes the cylinder. How many edges do I see? Well, I see a left edge and a right edge, and that's really about it. Left edge, right edge, and the top shape looks like it starts at the edge, it curves up, it curves down. Back to the drawing, it curves up, it curves down, and then for the bottom curve, it just curves from one edge to another, so one edge to another. The bottom curve should really match the top curve. Sometimes it's not quite right, it's not quite perfect at the beginning, so sometimes, look at that, look at all those retries. Oops, I made some mistakes. This is just a sketchbook, it's okay to make mistakes. So this is basically an oval on top, curve on the bottom, and just like on the cone, I'm going to shade darker because it's darker in the middle, and I'll gradually shade lighter and lighter, from dark to lighter and lighter. Can they see what you're doing, Katana? Yep. Good. Very good. And then I'll shade the other side from dark to lighter and lighter. Dark to lighter and lighter, dark to lighter and lighter. And it doesn't look like the top really has a lot of shade on it. But I think, I mean, just maybe put a medium shade on the top. And then the shadow sort of comes down like that on here. Again, your shading is probably going to be better than, I, than my shading. I'm just kind of rushing through this. The more time you take on the shading, the better it looks. In fact, here's kind of a cool trick. If you take your finger and you rub it on there, I know it's kind of hard to see. Could you zoom in? Our cameraman is, our camera woman is Miss Sydney. If you zoom in, you can kind of sort of blend a little bit. If you want to get the shading just real smooth, you can blend a little bit. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell what it's doing, but why don't you try blending? I mean, it makes your finger dirty, but it, it does help spread the, um, the shades a little bit easier and neater. Okay, we've got a pyramid. Oops, that's a cone. This is a, what is this thing cylinder. called? A cylinder, that's right. What else do we have left? <gasps> How about? A cube. Mmm, yes. A cube. Again, you can start with the edges. I see one edge, two edges, and three edges. So I'll draw one. Two, and then the third one's down a little bit lower. Three. One, two, three. I see a shape up here. The shape looks kind of like a... Square, kind of. Yeah, yeah, or sort of like a slanted square. Yeah. Well, it almost looks like a kite, almost. Like mm -hmm. a diamond, almost. It slants that way. It slants this way, so up that way. And then there's the this top and that top. The top edge matches the bottom edge. So the top edge should match the bottom edge in your picture. Top edge, bottom edge match on that side too. And then you've got a cube, lickety split, pretty cool. Um, the shading for this one, it looks like this side is the darkest side. I usually like to start with the darkest side first. I'll shade that real good, neatly as I can. Uh, this side is sort of medium, it looks like. Ooh, that's good, Katana. Mm -hmm. And then the top is the light, looks like the lightest side. And then the shadow comes down. I see sort of a shadow shape like that. 
and again. Now there's hard shadows and there's soft shadows. This one sort of has a sort of in-between shadow. The line is not exactly a straight line. It's sort of a little bit faded, but it's a... Uh, It's also kind of, it's almost like a line, isn't it? So I'm gonna make that shadow, do my best. Again, if you really wanted to make it nice and smooth and even, you could blend it, but I, I think I'm gonna call that done and I'll label it with the word Q. Okay. Remember what that one is, Katana? Um, I think it is a rectangle that prism. Aha, very good. You were paying attention in class, weren't you? Okay. This one is a sl four. yeah. I see you see four. I think for me it looks a little different because we're sitting in different places. For me, it looks like what I'm seeing is one edge that's slanted, another edge that's slanted. Oh, I forgot to start with the edges. Oops. Let's start. There's one edge, two edges, three edges, and then I'll do the top. The top is slanted, and the bottom is slanted. Then this side is slanted, that side is slanted. And then this slant matches this slant. And then this edge matches this edge. And then I can shade it in. This is the darkest side. I'm starting with the darkest side. I'll do the side to side lines and then the I'm sorry, I start with the up and down lines and then I'll do the side to side lines. Nice and even all the way through. And then this looks like the next darkest side right here. Make this one a little bit lighter. And then lastly is the, um, the lightest side. Can't forget the shadow and this one I'm going to put behind the pyramid, so I'll just make the shadow going down away from the shape. I always like to make the shadow a little bit darker right next to the shape because you want to be able to tell the shadow apart from the shape. And if I don't make them a little bit different, then it's not gonna really stand apart. Again, I wanna do the edges, fade the edges out. And I'm not too worried about it being perfect, but that's still pretty good, don't you think, Katana? Yeah. Yours looks pretty good. On yours, you can, if you wanna do the side to side lines mm -hmm. to sort of help fill that in, you can. But it's, it's, it's pretty good. All right. What is, oh, we gotta label it. Rec. Rec. Tang. You are prism. Man, we're running out of space. Do you have any space? This is the last one. The sphere. I love the word sphere. Isn't that fun to say? Mm -hmm. Sphere. It kind of rolls off the tongue. All right, where am I going to fit? I'll do it right here. The sphere is just a circle. But it doesn't start to be sphere like until you start to add the shadows. And how do you make a good shadow on a sphere? Well, you look at the dark spots. I see the shadow. That's really the dark zone. So I'll go ahead and I'll make the dark zone on it, right? All right. So you got your dark zone, Katana? Yeah. Good. And it, it sort of looks, for me, it's the dark zone is reaching up to close to the top. And then I'll fade it out. This side is actually, I don't know if you can see in the camera, this side looks a little bit lighter somehow. So I'll fade from dark to medium to light. From dark to medium to light. From dark to medium to light. And I really wanna work the shadows so that there's like a really defined shadow on this one side. You can see like a little, like right here, you see the Oh, shadow. there's a shadow, yeah. It's kind of you like two shadow. shadows. You have a shadow, yep, exactly. There's two and shadows. And you know why there's two shadows, Katana? Because one side is, this side is lit up by the light, and that side is lit up by the light. 
Yeah, exactly. There's two shadows because there's two kinds of light shining on it. I'm gonna do this shot that shadow at the bottom. I'm gonna do the shadow that I see. Okay. Perfect. You you draw what you see here. Alright, and I'll do it's a little bit darker right at the bottom on my shadow. And then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Man, these look awesome. Wow, 3D shapes. Um, what else can we do to this to make it look cooler? I don't know. You can draw little people on them. Little stick figures. That'd be fun. Little body, little legs. You gotta draw both halves of the legs and both halves of the arms. And he's like, he climbed up the, the cylinder. I always draw a stick figure, then I color it in thick. He's, this guy's waving. He's waving at his mom. Oh and that's it, this is mom is down here. And she's saying, get down from there. <laughs> that's what my mom would say. Get down from there. Right this minute. I always write the words first and then I put the voice bubble around it. And, okay, I draw her torso and I'll draw her arms because she's mad. She's got her hands on her hips. Mm -hmm. And then the little hands. She is upset. She's wearing a dress. And then her legs come out and her feet. She's not happy. Anyways, yeah, what else could you do to these other things? I don't know. I mean, you're gonna have to be creative in order to figure out something uh, to do that's you interesting. You could probably think like for the sphere, you mm -hmm. could probably for the think sphere. of like making it a pool. Oh, or like, I mean, there's different kinds of things that are balls too, right? Mm -hmm. You could make it into like a... Snowball. <gasps> oh, that's good. Yeah, so you could just copy what we, what we drew or you could use them in another bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you should give all these a try. Can't wait to see what you did. Thumbs up. And thank you, Sydney, for videotaping us. Bring in your homework, and uh, we can't wait to see what you did.